Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. All right, please note that the language and ideas presented on the show might not be suitable for everyone. If you're under 18, make sure your mom isn't around. If you're over 80, why is your mom around? You're listening to Cyrus Says. Yes, we're going to meet a girl who has worked in three Michelin starred restaurants and only got tips as rewards. A woman who has suffered and struggled, who's crawled on the streets of London, who's walked on the pathways of Paris and New York, and today, at the age of under 45, is a very successful restaurateur. Her name, Aditi Dugar, and this is her unique story, which I had no idea about. Why follow your auntie's advice when you can follow Cyrus Says on Facebook and Twitter to stay updated about the latest shows. Yes, uh, time to talk about what happened to me last week. Uh, in the name of extortion, I had to give some money for a Ganpati procession that is being done in my area. Happily, I gave uh, 150 rupees, which is my budget normally for anything, including weddings. Uh, the person got upset and said, please give with your right hand, don't give with your left hand. I said, no, thank you. I'm not going to do this. We have to do this business my way. You want the money, it goes to my left hand. Anyway, we went on arguing and he said, I won't take the money. So finally, I, we agreed on a compromise. I gave it with my right hand, but slapped him with my left hand. And I think that's fair because I can't take any more superstitions. First, in the name of religion, you take money from me. Then you get all holy and godly about it. And then uh, at least let me slap you. Of course, as I get older, I'll do more than that to him. But that's for next year. Till now, it's Cyrus Says coming up. And that's what Cyrus Says. All right, here on Cyrus Says, it's time to meet a food personality. I need food personalities on these shows from time to time. Otherwise, you know, my weight goes down. So we've got a lovely lady called Aditi Dugar. Say, please say hi. Hi. And uh, say a little bit more about yourself. You've got five seconds. Uh, so... No, that's enough. See, I'll do all the talking. <laughs> I was just trying to test your enthusiasm levels. But Aditi, don't worry. We're here to discuss, you know, I've done a lot of research. I'm going to start with a few lines that uh, my creative team of 300 people has put together. They say you're a creative genius. Now, this is a lot of pressure. I'm <laughs> That's quoting you. a lot of pressure. Aditi has brought to India its first botanical bistronomy experience, I hope I said it correctly, through mask. Is that how you pronounce that, it? That's correct. Okay, we'll come to that because that's the main part of the whole uh, discussion here. But we have to go back and start in time because people have to get to know you. See, what we do on these shows are we try and uh, show people through a little microscope to listeners in just 40, 50 minutes, all right? So they will know everything about you, all your secrets, your sordid past, uh, what you cheated at, uh, how much you owe the income tax department, uh, whether you pay VAT and service tax. All these important details are revealed here on the show. I'm going to go right back to the beginning and then we'll come to mask. Okay. So it says that you started cooking at the age of 16. Yeah. Is, is this is this your first memory of a trace with the kitchen? Yes, it is. Because I think my whole family is really into food and my mother's an amazing, amazing. But everybody <laughs> says that about their own mothers. I mean, I, I, it's like saying my kids are beautiful. Everybody says their kids are beautiful. Have you seen kids? Some Indian kids are so ugly, it's scary. You know, even the parents look okay and the kids look ugly. And I'm like, why? Of course, I'm not saying this is the case with you. I know you're about to have a child. So please don't get into that. But uh, coming back, uh, your mother was a good cook, as everybody says. Yeah, but you know, I, I growing up, like when I'd opened my tiffin box in school it was literally like a feast in Mumbai in, in Bombay okay so you were the uh, this is also a, a generic thing which I think most people can empathize with you have one or two people in the class who always have the better food yeah. so you were one of those I was one of those so yeah. your mom was very popular because they knew that you know Aditi's tiffin is the one to exactly, look out for exactly the one to attack what, what would be in it now that you mention so everything like I would get like uh, pani puri to school burger but how to will school. it stay fresh yeah because she was she uh, she would pack it in such a manner where everything was separate. I'd get burger, I'd get Frankie, I'd get pav bhaji. One six, so like, like, come out of pani puri. I'm a big pani puri fan, but my whole idea is, and, and that is why I don't believe you can replace the pani puri wala outside because basically it's a fresh product which is made and given to you in a second. Even in a club or a restaurant, yeah, the, it's like thirty seconds. The puris feel, would come separately. The chana would come. But does come it retain separate. that uh, yeah, yeah, taza totally. quality? I mean, my my tiffins were like. And super then you pour fancy, the chutney, yeah. you pour the stuff inside it yourself, and it's like every day it was like variety at lunch. Wow, what fun! Yeah, yeah, and so you would make the pani puri for your friends. <laughs> so you're already sort of doing things. Burgers, pizzas as well. Everything. Everything would arrive in my tiffin box. So like. now these are common foods, but obviously yours is better. Because this is the most difficult thing. It is like everybody can sing, but if you can sing really well. Yeah. So It was amazing. Like, you know, I remember like, uh, you know, she used to, even when a, a simple paratha would come and be like a Chinese paratha with noodles and vegetables inside. Ah. So like she'd keep doing like different experimental things. Experimental things. And I think I had Slightly like, ahead of the time. Now yeah. I think a lot of people are doing that. I remember, I think in the last 10 years, 
I've seen these parathas we have different varieties I know in Delhi there's this guy who gives you about 200 yeah. but uh, by and large it wasn't much of an experiment up to say about 10 years ago I would say Yeah but we'd eat like lots of odd combinations like we'd add pakora with something halwa so like always combining like couple flavors I must say it sounds healthy Yeah <laughs> <laughs> the Dugar family must have been very popular in the neighborhood. Well, Dugar is now my maiden name is Nahita. Oh. So my mom actually used to run cooking lessons and stuff as well. Mhm. Uh-huh. So she's she But she was a housewife been, primarily. She was a housewife. So yeah. it was just like a lark for fun. Yeah, for fun. Yeah, but you get a name, you get a reputation. No, no, for sure. I think and like after Tarla Dalal in that society she was like wow. quite like Let me tell you about Tarla Dalal. I was in her book <laughs> as an 8-year-old boy because I was in the same building. Oh really? So there's a picture one of my most proud moments. I mean the the first cooking book. And there's like 20 kids at a party and in the bottom corner you can see my left shoulder and half my face. You know, it it kills the appetite, but uh, by and large, it's a good book, and she was very popular. So your mom was the was the inspiration yeah. in a sense. Everybody, like even my grandmom, like the food basically on my mom's side of family is mm-hmm. they're very strong in cuisine. Okay, so now let's get to you. But were you dabbling just because you saw them doing that, or how did it begin? I loved baking. I think that was more fun. I didn't really enjoy. But baking is a learned art, isn't it? Yeah, so just love to experiment, make cakes. You know, I I guess baking is a lot of fun. So I think I did more as an experiment in the kitchen, and then I remember my first memory is uh, when you know every time my mom would bake cakes and they would flop, and uh, in my uh, grandmom's house there were a lot of cows. Flop meaning? Like you know they wouldn't rise. So oh, that way. <laughs> well, that sounds terrible. Double meaning there. Looking at a middle-aged man like me and saying flop and doesn't rise and all. What? Let's keep this conversation civil, young lady. Huh. So we had cows in my grandmom's. Now uh, you scared shed. me again. I, I thought somewhere in Bangalore they've got cows in the house. Yeah. So in the in the shed in the bungalow they had Where? cows in Pali Hill. What are you saying? Yeah. Are you Govinda? Are you related to him? Oh, there was this other. Uh, uh, what is? Who is the other TV actor? Um, Sivastav. Uh, uh, am I right? Well, one of the, uh, Anjun Shivastav, one of these guys, I had cows in the building. So you had cows in a bungalow in Pali Hill. Yes. These are not old relatives that no, you no, call they're, cows. They're my, with due my... respect to the government, <laughs> these, these are real cows. Yeah, real cows. What fun! So, they just brought the whole village with them. I, I love these people. Who, which generation are we talking about? Not very long ago. Wow! How many cows? <laughs> so we had four cows in the house. Excellent. And uh, so I remember, like every time we'd bake. Wait, give me, and... I'm still getting my head around four cows in Pali Hill. <laughs> what fun! Yeah. And uh, so every time the cakes wouldn't rise or they'd like be a disaster, we'd feed them to the cows. So I and the cows would eat them. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know cows like cake. So like all the all the rubbish in the kitchen that wasn't made well, we'd feed them to the cows. You know, cow is like a mother and sacred, <laughs> yeah. and we can't feed them anything. We have to first check with the government before we feed them. So what, the, what are the cows' names? I want to just talk about cows for the rest of the show, please. I'm a big animal cows, guy. Cows. <laughs> I want to keep a cow for in Alibag myself, but my wife says they eat a lot. Do they eat a lot? Yeah, they eat a lot. Oh God! So how? But it was amazing because we'd have milk right I mean, from the udder, and like you know, that's my. You're memory. a scary woman. As a 16-year-old, you take your friends and say, "Come on, let's have some milk. Grab a cow's underling and, and go boom, boom, boom." So. Are you? Are you? Didn't have that uh, milk tetra pack at that point. It was so much easier. Yeah. So it was like you know the ancestors did a lot of like going back to the roots, and I think that's what we grew up seeing. Names? The cows must have names. What were the names? I don't remember the names. What do you call them? Just cow? <laughs> Come here? Do they fetch? Well, what are they like? I've never had a cow. So you had cows in the bungalow, right? Yeah. The, the, uh, the so courtyard. So there was a shed. Yeah, there yeah. was a shed downstairs, and there were there were cows. Where's the bungalow there? now? It's still there. It's wow. at Pali Hill. At so you're very rich, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my uh, my nana and nani were very rich. They had four cows. <laughs> yeah, my nana and nani had two children. One who looks like a cow, but you know, no, no real cows. Amazing. They had a cocker spaniel, but look at a cocker spaniel. Look at a cow. I mean, look at the they difference. They had horses. They had cows. They All had, in Pali. No, no, no horses in Pali. But we had a horse in Juhu Beach. What? Yeah. You sound like you own the whole suburbs. <laughs> They've got horses in Juhu Beach. We've got in the Bandra. We've got the cows, <laughs> and we've got the elephants roaming in the Baikala region. <laughs> Big family. Are you from yeah. the royalty? No, I mean of course they are so. royalty. <laughs> you just say it. Nobody knows. All right. So very interesting. So you the the thing is that at sixteen, apparently in your bio data it says that at sixteen there's is the point when you remember cooking. Yeah. So at that point you were still baking or it's something more? No, just baking. I always w- loved. Was baking. it a success? It was very six. I mean, I really enjoyed it, and that's why I started pursuing it. And like, I've a lot of family that lives in London, mm-hmm. so every time I do, travel, they have cows. <laughs> no, they if they don't have cows, they're nothing. All right, <laughs> because your family here has got. Do they have a horse no. on the Thames River running no. up and down? No, I don't know. These are poor cousins. 
<laughs> who, are, who are these? The royal family. Yeah. Oh. So. Uh, I remember like Baking. always uh, going back and like wanting to do courses there and... Uh, no, but you're 16 now. So you're just... Uh, let's just stay at that point for a second. So when you make stuff, people appreciate it. Of course. In the family as well as your friend circle. Of course. Which is not too many 16-year-olds, I presume, are actually, you know, dabbling in the kitchen and making exactly. good products. So so there's an idea that you've got a talent and whatever handed down by your mom and grandmom. And you've got cows as well. So there are lots of things going for you. And so what happens next then? You finish school? I finished school. I, I, I got into finance. I What a bore. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was a bit of a nerd. My God, with cows and horses and all, why would you go into finance? Or just to count them because you had so many. <laughs> hmm. so, uh, so you got into finance and you went abroad? Yeah. No, no. I studied in, uh, in Bombay. Okay. So I was first doing science because I think my brother was a genius. So I decided to like just follow his footsteps. So I did science for when two years. When you say years. he's a genius, what does he do? He he went to MIT and he runs a hedge fund in London right now. Oh God, for a minute I was wondering whether Abdul Kalam was your brother because you said genius in science and he's the only scientist I know. So I, I was getting a little worried there. So he runs a hedge fund. Yeah. And been through the worst times and come back uh, on top as well. Exactly. I think those who survived the uh, the last seven, eight years are the ones who are really successful. Yeah, yeah. He's very successful in his So you're going to follow in his footsteps? So I was planning to and that's why I took up but science. But Aditi, what would happen to the cows? <laughs> you can't just walk off like that. He's gone to London He's super successful You leave Who look after the cows The cows are gone Oh man <laughs> Really long, long old story As now. in gone gone forever Yeah yeah No more cows All in the for shed. Storage What now. about the horse in Juhu Beach <laughs> all He's gone. now a Bollywood actor Fading glory Doing his cameos here and there Yes What are you saying So all the animals gone All the animals gone Then we have to talk about food <laughs> We have nothing else left Damn it Let's get back to food So you were pursuing finance You were studying in Bombay Then the, all kinds of things Seemed to happen When did this uh, change happen To go towards the The cuisine uh, Sort of things So I think After I had kids Okay So So after getting married So let's go step by married. step because I'm presuming you got married Then you had kids Yeah yeah But after the cow story We can't top it So even if it was reversed It doesn't really matter <laughs> So you uh, you you got a normal degree. You yeah. go and, uh, you get married. Is your husband interested in this whole food business thing? No, he's a jeweler. He's a jeweler. All right. So he has, he has, doesn't even know what you eat. <laughs> no, he's a huge food. He's a big foodie. Mm-hmm. So that's why he encouraged me and like all my madness of. But then you had kids, and then I'm, I'm presuming you're staying at home for a little while. And uh, yeah, when... but we traveled a lot because he 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 participates in all the international shows. He's uh, so we tra- I traveled. With him everywhere And then Obviously I was not interested In really attending The jewellery show So I started like Staging at different restaurants mm-hmm. Because I was always Like drawn towards So you went food. to learn is what I you went say. to learn so, so while he would go and steal jewels from some strange people in, uh, let's say, Belgium, you'd be out there finding out the better parts of their cuisine and exactly. mixing and matching in your head. It seems like in your family, this mixing and matching is very important. Very important. Yeah, and you sort of create your own cuisine in a sense. Exactly. Which is great. Because how much can we eat uh, the same paneer, uh, tikka wala and whatever, biryani and the five dishes of India? I think they've been done to death now. Enough. Let's retire then. Okay. Uh, let's move on now. So you've, you, you're married, you have kids, you've been checking out the food, but you don't have a plan in your head yet. Of course I do. Oh, you do? I'm so sorry. Please talk for yourself. I'll talk for you and we'll go nowhere. (laughs) Plan in my head. So, yeah, I I started working at different restaurants, staging at very, very, uh, you know, I started figuring out what the top restaurants of the city were, wherever I was. And Mm -hmm. I'd stage with the different chefs. And I think my first experience was at La Gavaroche under Michel Roux Jr. Go slowly. When you speak foreign languages, we have to understand what you're talking about. So what? who is this? Is, is she famous? Is it a male or a female? Male. But uh, how can a male be Michel? Because, because if you remember your Beatles song, it's Michel Marbel. <laughs> That's clearly female. No, the Roux brothers and he's one of the... What's the other brother called? Nandini? <laughs> What, what the hell, man? I mean, this is just throwing me off my game here. Michel Roux Jr. Yes. I'm sorry. So, with respect, there's a very big name in the cuisine yeah, world. Yeah, he is. Okay. So, he, they were one of the first restaurants in London, a French restaurant that got three Michelin stars. Right. And I, when, I, when I wrote to him for like, I, I probably hounded him for like six, eight months and he finally... Seriously? Yeah. Finally called me in to work for him. But, but you emailed him first and he didn't respond. Yeah. Um, did, did you say Dear sir Dear ma'am You know these little things Can irritate a person Especially if you're not sure Who the person is 
And so then finally he responds because he, you just uh, yeah. inundated him with uh, exactly. request after request and you go to London and you work with him. I worked with him in, okay. the, in and then he put me in the pastry section because that's where I wow, wanted to be. Oh, yummy. So oh. I think that was It's wanted to get over the cows. And yes. then it became oh. a thing, right? Like you work in one restaurant and the energy in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You're like so that that became my thing every so time. So you're literally the person who's making things now. Yeah, yeah. You you're at the bottom of the level. You're not you're actually making food. I was Not until management. now I'm managing. No, no, I'm saying then when you entered, then, he yeah. put you right yeah, into yeah, the course. rough and ready section, and you actually made pastries and all. But isn't it tempting? I love pastries. Isn't it tempting to eat what you're making? Of course, I mean, I was tell me the truth. Do you guys ever touch it and lick it and all that before you put it out there for the, you know? Yeah, totally. I'm sure you. I, I was just thinking. You have to, right? Right, and I'm saying it's not like you then clean it up. You know, yo, this cream is good. Yum, 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 whatever. And then you you sort of pat it and make it look good again, and you put yeah, it. Am I right? That's correct. Okay, so it's good to know the restaurant's <laughs> name is La Gavroche, where they all touch, lick, spit, use their saliva over every piece of cake there, and then you spend forty five pounds to get a chocolate eclair, which has been touched by four different people's saliva. I, I, I three stars, four stars, as far as I'm concerned. Then to one star less for them. So from Gavroche, which is now, of course, baking is your strong point, but you wanted to do other things as well. Yeah, because then it, you know, the energy in the kitchen, you really, uh, it's it's very very exciting to be there, and uh, so I just wanted to start exploring more food. And uh, did they shout at you in the kitchen? They shouted a lot. Because I heard, I, I hear normally that they have this hierarchy in these yeah. fancy restaurants where the big guys like a rude autocrat, and then you know down the line I've they been thrown out a couple of times. What are you saying? As yeah, in yeah. fired. No, like they just throw you out because you're what? a junior there and you don't clean the platform and you like have to go. They throw you out? You have to leave the kitchen. This is like racism? It's like time out. <laughs> and then you what? You to clean the You platform. just stand in the corner? Yeah, literally come back for the next service. So how long? <laughs> so you're you're thrown out for that service if you don't follow the rules in a French kitchen. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and then uh, do you cry and stuff? Like what happens? <laughs> you don't cry. You realize that you need to follow rules, and did, you know when you became you're management. For did, a top restaurant. When you became management, did you do the same thing? I'm very strict in my kitchen. Do you shout? I shout. Have you slapped? No. Have you poked someone? <laughs> no. Have you thrown a ladle or a knife? No, but I do get very angry. And, and do you use a lot of bad language? No. Can you can you tell us? Can you give us a taste of what it sounds like? I'll pretend to be the irritating boy who dropped the pastry or didn't clean whatever. What no, would you say? I, I, I don't. I don't abuse. Would you say Raju? There's always a Raju involved in this kind of situation. I've always noticed the guy who doesn't clean is a Raju. There's no Raju in my kitchen. They're very, very educated. You're telling me the French passionate chefs in my kitchen. So what you're saying is, if you're Raju, you're not educated. <laughs> you're not only racist. You're nationalist, reversist. What the hell? Raju can be a great cook or chef. Yeah. But this must be a good experience, right? When they they treat you with uh, sort of contempt, but in a sense, you're training, exactly. you're learning about the world, and you're no no special privileges. Exactly. Okay, so let's leave that aside now. You went through the whole thing in La Gavroche, then you moved up to management. Then what happens to you? So no, I mean I've moved. I mean, obviously, I'm, where's your I'm husband not during all this time? He was working in Bombay. In Bombay, or he was in in Belgium. He'd come he and was, go. He'd come and go. But no, no, but I wasn't working continuously. It was short stints. Yeah, but so like, you're still leaving the nest and coming back, leaving the nest and coming back. Well, London is my second home, so. Oh, so that was always the plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wanted to make this the nest. Yeah. All right. So, um, and then like I worked at uh, La Petite Maison in London. I've okay. worked so and I have family. Is, is this also a bakery thing, La no, Petite Maison? No, it's a French. Uh, petite is small, right? Yeah. Because I remember when I take my clothes off, French girls always say, "Hey, La Petite, La Petite." <laughs> Don't laugh. Uh, and what is Maison? It's a, it's a small house. Maison okay. means house. So what do you get? What kind of food are you doing there? So again, it's like all French fine dining kind of food. I, may I say something bad about the French? I honeymooned in Paris with my wife, uh, who is still my wife now for some reason. And everywhere we went, they had all these long names. And uh, uh, I don't speak French, but let's say the name was Washima, the result as Zimas Berlin, and then a small little thing came like a bullseye. You know that sweet we used to have. It, uh, sometimes I felt there's a real rip off the the length of the name and the kind of writing that was there. And then and and the servings were always less. No, this this restaurant has the most amazing food. Like it's a executive lunch kind of business lunch place. Oh, you are rich people catering to rich people. I'm talking about the common human being who goes <laughs> to places like Paris and eats in places like El Dorado Hotel, which is anyway the wrong kind of name for a Paris dining. But 
you should know you're in the wrong place. Let's not talk about my honeymoon because I'll start crying. <laughs> Let's get back to your life. Okay, we're going to take a break. Then we'll come back and talk about uh, mask and everything else. But before we take that break, I just want to understand. So you're only in London, or this little learning curve that you're going through is where? It's, only in London? No, it's everywhere. I went to Thailand. I went to, and I've done a lot of culinary trips. Went to San Sebastian. Went to Copenhagen. But it, you, in a way, and this is a difficult question to ask someone. Do you think it's even better that you do this kind of thing and you actually go right there into the trenches, so to speak? And learn where you know there's lots of pressure and people are screaming and shouting and orders have to be made and blah 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 and in different uh, cultures, countries and exactly. cuisines rather than just go and do a four year course in a yeah. catering college in Dadar. Yeah, I didn't get that opportunity, so there's I can't really compare. But uh, but you, I think the learning curve was you have to stand on your feet and learn yeah. immediately and move on. So in a, in a sense, it's like fast and furious. Exactly the first part, which I like. The rest was really <laughs> bad. Sorry, sorry about the fellow passing away and all that. But let's stay with the story. So Aditi Dugar, we'll take a small break. We'll eat something because. We're both hungry I know that you're uh, with child and uh, I look like I'm with child so we have a lot in common we'll come back and now discuss mask which is where uh, you've reached and which everyone's talking about so stay with us hello listeners my name is Munaf Kapadia and I am Nabil Merchant we are the co-hosts of the show my neighbor Zuckerberg on the show we invite ordinary people who have extraordinary stories to share Tales of creativity, persistence, and struggle. We call them entrepreneurs. Tune in every Monday to listen to their journeys. We are available on iTunes, Audio Boom, and the IVM Podcast app. Okay, back here with Aditi. Aditi Dugar, of course, has a lovely restaurant called Mask. I'll come to the pronunciation. We already had an argument about it off uh, off the show, and uh, we'll also talk about the person she met who helped uh, start this. But we'll just go back to your story because we're going in an order here. So you've now gone all over. You said you reached Thailand. <laughs> yeah. I reached Thailand. I have family in Thailand. You got so, family everywhere. Yeah, we we Marwaris are like that. Really? First, everywhere. you got cows everywhere. You got horses everywhere. And you got people everywhere. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. So uh, a lot of my dad's side family lives in Thailand. So we'd go back. You know, it was like a yearly kind of uh, vacation we'd take. And I guess Thai food yeah. is the three curries at least. Huh. For the Indian palate and being vegetarian was just, yeah. uh, you know, something like we'd die to eat every time we'd go. And uh, the vegetarian festival happens during <clears throat> Navratri. Right. Which is, I think, the best Thai food that's available in Bangkok at that time for any vegetarian. So I decided to to train with a street food specialist at that time during that festival. Street food as in a guy who actually sells on the road? Yeah. Okay. So I worked uh, with this woman called Mekadi. Make a D. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound Marwari to me, but anyway, go on. <laughs> no, she's not Marwari. I'm just but... kidding, I'm just kidding, huh? So Make a D was teaching you the ropes? Yeah, she was. So I, I, I may think... I interrupt for a second, but I've been to Thailand. I must say the street food it's one of the places where actually you glorify street food in many parts of the world. They're not always that good. Yeah. But in Thailand, I think the street food is your bang for your buck, no doubt. It's right. It's insane. And the curries and the paste are just exactly. perfect. Yeah. So and make then, a D. Obviously in the vegetarian festival you can eat anywhere, right? Because you're not really doubting whether it has shrimp or Oh that way. Yeah. I thought you you pay one rate and you can just keep, keep plucking food from anybody. Uh, make it come here. Uh. So I trained with her and um, you know and Can I ask again, interrupting you, but uh, so what's the difference between veg and non veg? The curries remain the same, no? Except the meat being put in. Yeah, the paste. The no, paste the and all is the same, right? No, I mean it has the shrimp spice paste left. or it has fish oil oh, is that or whatever, so? of course. So then in the green curry, if I have a veg green curry, what is, oh, the taste is different? Yeah, to, you won't uh, have the shrimp, shrimp paste. green yeah, curry? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, so if it tastes amazing, then it definitely has shrimp in it. <laughs> yeah, that's well, I don't want to get into that. But which is cheaper? For me, that's the most important thing. I don't think. As a Marwari, I want the right answer on this one. Huh? So I don't have cows to go back to. This is all I got. Yeah. So uh, just to correct you, vegetarian food isn't cheap because it doesn't have meat in it. I'm yeah? not saying that I'm asking you. I have no idea because these things are, uh, you know, different cultures have different rules. So you have no idea sometimes. I always thought that Thai food is a good bargain around the world because they generally tend to give you the curry and if you're non-veg, whatever, in one go. So you pay one rate and you get your curry, you get your chawal, you get your meat or whatever. Yeah, it's really sometimes they throw money. in a salad as well. Food in Thailand is yeah? value for money. Okay, so in the veg thing, I'm presuming it's the same thing. You get everything in one go. But she made really interesting like uh, street food. So like, you know, the Thai pan and the sago dim sums, etc. Mm -hmm. So it was literally all the street food you see in Bangkok. And then, you know, she plated up beautifully and things like that. So when I came back from Thailand, I decided to start... Uh, 
uh, introducing that on my in my catering company, which I had started before I'd left. Which was outsourced. Which was food that you'd send. Yes. As in, we we call for it. Yeah. What's the word? You order. Cater. 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 Order. Cater. Yeah. Okay. So my mom, I you know she when I obviously after I had kids, I started uh, working with her. I said, let me you know up the game a bit, and move away from your classes and make this not about like. Uh, a home run thing so uh, i started sage and saffron in 2014 mm-hmm. and uh, we did like bespoke kind of uh, catering you know go slow and tell us what this is what is bespoke so we catering to a very discerning lo- uh, to a discerning lot okay. so you're catering like for instance you call us and you know the menu is catered according to your needs so, so what happens we tell you what we it's like it's tailor made it's 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 not mass that's why it's bespoke <laughs> No, but what I mean is, uh, you interview the person, so think about what will go with them, or, or, or do they tell you exactly what they want? They tell us what they want, what cuisine they want, but then you know we we integrate it to make it to your needs. Okay, all right. So, what is Bolan, and what role did Bolan play in your life? It's apparently, a fine dining restaurant. So yeah, these are all the restaurants I've worked at. How so many restaurants did you bloody work at? I've worked at quite a few. I'm looking at the list is over twenty. No, 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 not over twenty. But I've interacted with a lot of chefs. Okay, good uh, time to ask the question. Then, did you take tips at these restaurants? Yeah, of course, lots of tips. What, what was like the most tip you ever got? <laughs> Do you have any memory? And who tipped you? I mean, they because obviously they wouldn't pay you if you're going to come work for two weeks. But right. they'd like give Allowed you a little, yeah. yeah, a bit of an allowance or like a free meal. Like even till date, when I go back to uh, La Petite Maison, I get like free dishes on my table. <laughs> So you did this job just so that in yeah. future you could eat for free there. Exactly. <laughs> Talk about the marwa is looking ahead. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I really want to ask you: uh, Did you get tips when you worked there at any of these restaurants? Yeah. So they don't they don't pay you anything for working there, but then yeah, they they tip you for like you know your meals or to get a. And what about people of our skin color? Did they ever tip you as customers? <laughs> no, I didn't. I wasn't really part of service. Okay, you would go in the kitchen and yeah. organizing and all that. Exactly. Excellent. So now let's go to the main uh, point of this entire exercise, which is mask. First. Let's, uh, we had a big argument. Is it mask, maske, mask? How do you pronounce it? Mask. Okay, and is it? Does it mean the same thing as M A S K? No. So yeah, I mean it's kind of correlated because mask means an arist- aristocratic theatre. Okay. So obviously theatre and mask. And, okay, wearing a mask yeah. sort of thing. Okay. So now, now let I'll let you talk. I won't interrupt. Tell me how this was born. This idea and who is this Pratik Sadhu? So mask. Uh, so base. So I ran this catering company for the last two years, and over over this period of time, I've really I think catered catered to a very discerning lot in the city, and I realized that obviously the city was really looking for something bigger in terms of the food scene. Mm-hmm. And again, it all goes back to like ancestral roots, where you know we're eating seasonally, and mm. you know everybody is becoming more conscious, and uh, you know ingredients ingredient focused, as to say. So uh when my when I went to San Sebastian and we ate at like the top lot of the new Michelin restaurants so the top chefs of the world are coming out of that region in Spain and uh when we uh went there we realized the whole connection between the soil or the land and you know the connection bit and that comes on the plate and it really made me realize how important it was and what difference it made to the food on the plate when you are eating that produce which has just been freshly picked so at the mask uh, here in india in bombay you've got the farmer tied just outside the restaurant is it and no but like just a few uh, 100 kilometers away right so we have a farm out of pune mm-hmm. that we're growing a lot of produce uh, and we've been traveling so that's when i met pratik when i came back from san sebastian and he just finished uh, coming back from uh, new york and he was at uh, leela for a while in udaipur and he's obviously worked with chefs who you know he's worked at restaurants like noma and under matt orlando and uh, under he was thomas keller's been a huge inspiration when he was at french laundry for a while he's a, he's a cia grad thomas keller's not the lady who invented <laughs> braille and all that that's somebody else yeah <laughs> so uh, So this guy has been around the kitchen. Yeah. Mr. Sadhu. And you met him and you decided to get this sort of uh, San Sebastian sort of look to to Not your Not San Sebastian kind of look but you have that same philosophy because like I'm saying So let me understand for layman so what you're trying to say is that the farmer is very much involved in the final product? Exactly. And also in terms of profit? <laughs> <laughs> How in terms of 
I'm just asking. I, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to find out what Pharma the Pharma is very important because that's where the produce is coming from. Right. So it's time we start giving him some credit and highlight, you know. The, okay. the so no profit. <laughs> Let's just be clear about that. I was worried about the business model. I was going to invest in the company. I was thinking that the damn farmer's taking everything now. I mean, I've got lots of time for farmers, but hey. <laughs> so then we decided, uh, you know, he was he came on board because we had the kind of same uh, philosoph- food philosophy in our heads. And he's obviously more the cuisine guy. And now I'm doing all the management. Why so? You Can I look at your body uh, of work and say that you cook things from pastries to Thai curries? And I mean, come on. Why is he bullying you? I say we fight Pratik over this. You take over management as well as the cuisine part. Okay, but that's good to know. So he does more of the food handling. You're handling the admin and the management, so to speak. And uh, what are we what, what are we presenting exactly at Mars? What kind of food? Is it this Noel cuisine, as we call it? So yeah, it's, it's food with uh, contemporary flares, very global. But it all boils, boils down to, you know, making the ingredients the star. Yeah, I was just trying to think of Old MacDonald had a farm, that song. And I'm thinking, you know, you've got the farmer outside, you've got the cows and the horse. So I could do three verses right now. <laughs> Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had four cows and one horse. Then, you know, you went away to London and the cows disappeared and the horse got lost in Jew, whatever. But, you know, the story started well. So to understand Mask now and get away from these silly jokes, uh, basically Mask is a sort of Noel cuisine thing where you involve the farmer again and right from inception till the time the food comes on the plate, you follow a sort of uh, ecological path which is as close and as pure as possible. Exactly. Am I right? So we've, we've actually since the last year and a half, we've traveled literally from uh, Himachal to Pondicherry you know, tying our roots with different uh, growers and farmers and using India as a region. The for best its produce, produce. The uh, best from the produce, best parts. And, but only using India as a region. Right. So nothing is really... But we're huge, aren't we, in terms of uh, what we, you can we're get? We're huge. You don't really need to look outside India. We for really 90% don't because, of the stuff. Huh. And sadly, a lot of stuff that even gets exported, you'll go to like Denmark and stuff. So we went to Copenhagen recently and like cloudberries is like a huge trend there and like you know the top chefs of the world are using these cloud berries and they're growing all over the Ladakh region so they got them from here no so a lot of it gets exported it's all government controlled right okay but since we've done so much research actually Pratik's just on his way to Ladakh right now for fruiting season you know what I like about you you sent him to Ladakh and you go to Copenhagen <laughs> this is why I like your management style <laughs> uh, I like what you're doing I think <laughs> I think it's really smart let well, him find I... one gooseberry and one blackberry <laughs> and one cloudberry and come back with them in his pocket while you go to Denmark the best nightclubs enjoy the best flavours alcohol friends family well, to be stuff. fair I sent him to Copenhagen as well <laughs> ah come on economy class I'm sure he suffered he had to walk from Ladakh Take a right You'll reach finally <laughs> Here's a torch That kind of thing Alright Okay now let's talk A little bit uh, more about Mars before we close And go to the AMAs Which is uh, Are there many uh, options now Is it just one restaurant So yeah It's one restaurant So the experience When you come into Mars You'll experience Either a three course Six so what course I get Or a nine in the three course. course So three course You can choose Any three courses From a six course menu You could come and eat Three mains Or three desserts If you like Okay. Oh, you can eat three desserts in a three course. Yeah, you well, can, that sounds so like that's, fun. That's your choice for a three course. You I like the way you said that. Uh, <laughs> looked at me properly and said, "Yeah, that this sounds like what you like." Three desserts. Come on, two more caramel custards, please. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, the six course is obviously the chef's choice, and then the nine or ten. Who course eats a nine or ten course? But honestly, who can? Is the mask experience where you really experience all our efforts that we've put together since the last year. But and nine half. or ten course means you eat nine or ten different dishes. Yes. But that that's obscene, isn't it? But they're all like small, like it's all like tasting portions. Finger foods. No, not one finger foods. One chip, <laughs> then another chip, then one tomato, then one more chip. Then repeat the tomato, then two more chips and then F off. Oh God. And how much did he charge for that experience? Uh, 4,500 plus taxes. Well, that's not that bad. Yeah. For the whole 10? Yes. Well, that's that's not bad at all. And how much for the three? For the three, it's uh, 2,200 plus taxes. So it makes sense to have the 10. <laughs> yeah, totally, right? I'll just stay there for hours. What no, time we- you shut? <laughs> Can I stay till 5 in the morning? Because I may have to take some time over the 10 calls. But I will not go until I get my money's worth. 4,500 plus tax. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it's... So, like I'm saying, we wanted to move to educate uh, people on the produce that's available in India. So, didn't want to make it an uptight space. The restaurant obviously has a great philosophy of food and design. But... Um, and everything is really beautifully presented. It's really our uh, thoughts on the plate. And there's a story behind each dish. And, you know, I experience from that region, etc. But we really wanted to open it out to an audience where, you know, people, because people are appreciating good food. And I think India is ready for it. Are there any star chefs involved in this? 
I mean, yeah, Pratik Sadhu. Oh, Pratik is himself a, is, is, yeah, is okay. the star. So chef. will there be more branches? That's what I want to know. No, we can't. Because we is can't. your philosophy to stay stand alone and be this one unique yeah. jewel in the crown thing? Exactly. Or, okay, so no question of franchising and have, no. having lots of of the options. All right. Okay, it's been excellent. Nice talking to you, and uh, hope you do really well at Mask. And when I go there, I'm going to use your name, and hopefully, I'll get the best table of and a certain discount for the three course. So I'll get the three course rate with a ten course you meal. You just said right? the three course was so cheap. No, it wasn't. I, I, for me, the mathematically, the ten course makes sense, but I can't eat so much because it's it's double, but you're getting triple if you but do the math. Three maths. courses. You can eat whatever you want from a six course menu. You could come and eat three mains. Yeah, <laughs> but I can eat ten courses at the rate of five courses if you look at the mats involved. For me, it's always about the mats. As a Marwari, I was hoping you'd appreciate. Appreciate that. Let me talk to Pratik. He seems a much nicer and affable person. I'll talk to Pratik. You're bullying me. Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean I have to do everything you say. After all, I've done that twice before and it didn't work. Anyway, listen, we're just kidding around. You've done wonderfully well, and I'm sure this restaurant is going to do well. Uh, and you know, more power to you. But before we let you go, there's a thing called the AMAs. I know you're pregnant, and uh, we shouldn't be wasting your time. But it's, it's an important section in our show where we just ask you questions which have nothing to do with food. Is okay. that okay? That's fine. Okay. If you have any questions for Cyrus, write to us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Or you can send an email to whatcyrussays at gmail.com. All right, we've been joined by May. May, thank you so much for coming. Aditi's been waiting to meet you. Really? No. Yes. Not really. Not really. You're just like, I have no idea I, who I you are. I was waiting to get rid of him. No, no, really? This, this Girl, is, let's chat. This is a bad comedy section where we just all talk together. I love that. Yeah. And the listeners are really struggle. So everybody talk at the same time. Yeah, da, 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 da. It's just Cyrus, right? Come on, yeah. May, ask questions. I ask questions? Yeah, That's please. my job. I just come here and ask questions. And don't okay, repeat what my... I'm saying. I don't know what's I'm going sad. on with this lady. Help. How are you? She's not Very ecologically good. savvy. <laughs> Do you know what it is to... He's talking over Okay, me can you explain what an ecologically savvy person does in a restaurant? Ecologically, like how do you get the savvy. food to the plate? Give me a step-by-step process. Come on, big shot. Depends you, what you're doing. No, depends, are we depends, doing depends, vegetarian depends, or depends. non-vegetarian? What's that? Are we doing dessert? No, that, 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 that's a wrong. We were not. The idea is how does it come from one end to the other end? From one end. May, to the you other know end. nothing. Listen to this recording later on. When I time. did. I heard something. No, you didn't. Now ask questions. I, I had to go down. Her to pick time up is precious. <laughs> Aditi, you do look precious, by the way. I'm very precious. Aditi, you'll have to answer these questions. Uh, stop yeah, pra- you'll have to answer these questions. Stop Don't praising forget. each other, please. Huh? Oh, I like her. She's got a very sweet face. Yeah? Okay, so the... Okay, let's talk about that then. Forget the questions. <laughs> how, how much... May, how much do you really like her? A lot. <laughs> Go Can on. I take you Open home? your soul, May. Tell us everything. <laughs> you want? You obviously want to eat for free, right? Because that's all we get. I eat for free. No, I just like her. She seems like a nice person. 4,500 bucks, you get a 10 spread. That's 10 different dishes What's a 10 spread? <laughs> Ten course meal, brother. Oh, ten course meal. Ten spread now is the new word, huh? <laughs> Hello, I do ten spread, huh? Ten spread. <laughs> or five spread. If you want a uh, waiter with a Malayalam accent, we'll get that also. No problem. <laughs> she organized all that for you, but ten. ten. I want to hear your Malu accent. I'll tell you later. <laughs> The worst. <laughs> there are some things you're and really bad I at. Cyrus. Lots, the thing is, I have lots of Malayali influence. Yeah. Lots, not little. Come. Start. Okay. So, okay. First question: What is the most interesting thing you found under sofa cushions? Come on, you try. It's a generic question. It's no big deal. Come on. I'm sure when you've been cleaning up the Aditi sofa, Dugar, under those cushions, which is the most, you found something weird. Yeah, weird thing you found and you've worked like, across the world and you you've like, picked up sofas and cushions. I hope cushions at least. In this present state, don't pick up a sofa. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a very bizarre question. Bizarre. It is very bizarre. Now, that's the kind of person listening to the show. Many yeah. of them are hospitalized before and after. That is true. I don't do that ever. Uh, well, I once... Uh, can I? Yeah. Since you don't want to. I did once at a friend's house pick up a cushion in the parent's bedroom and find a condom. <sighs> And it was unused, which is even more strange. So obviously somebody, some, no, no, no. I was about 17, 18, I do remember. And and the funny thing is, I was thinking, playing it out in my head, and thinking that somebody had a bad night because you know somebody brought this out, and then somebody didn't open it, and then somebody was like really upset, and then somebody. I just played it out, not knowing that this will play out many times in future. Yeah. I found a ham sandwich once. We'll but go with your no your story is nicer. Thanks, Tell me yeah. what happened with the ham sandwich. Nothing. It was really old. Did you eat it? No. Did you no. eat the ham and throw away the bread? No. Did that's you what you do. I know that's what you do. So what did you do? Nothing. I just this like, is your story. This is a ham sandwich. Pick up the sofa f- uh, thing and find a ham sandwich and that's it? Yeah. And then I threw it in the bin because it's gross. It's I like my story green. better. I, so I much find more. superhero toys everywhere. Really? Superhero, <laughs> superhero toys? toys? Yeah. Like Where Hulk do you live? and... <laughs> Hulk? You've got young kids. I... Yeah. Five and seven. Oh, your, oh, your husband's really young. One of the two. <laughs> 
five and seven. Yeah, I went to the Hulk phase. My daughter loves Hulk, so it was very embarrassing for us because the teacher told us, and she was six at that time, that we asked all the girls in class who their heroes were, heroines were, and they all went to Barbie doll and this and the Hannah Montana and all. And she said, "Incredible, incredible Hulk." And the, I like incredible. And the yeah. teacher was like, but "Why incredible Hulk? Because when he gets angry, he gets green." <laughs> that is <laughs> like, awesome. If you're a child, I mean, that's a great philosophy. That is if awesome. I get angry, so you know, my my daughter used to actually pose like that when she gets angry, but nothing would happen. She get really frustrated. <laughs> Your son yeah, do my that? My son wants yeah? to be Hulk <laughs> when he grows up. And then he's like, "Mama, mama, 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 am I becoming green?" Sorry, that's my Hispanic uh, son. Well, but there's <laughs> more than more than just green Hulks now. There's red Hulk yeah. and there's there, what? And, and the 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 pant is purple. When I was growing up, it was like green or something, and it's just. Colors change. Colors purple. It's a different purple. It's more like a Malayalam purple. Now there are Malayalam purple. It's completely different. Limited edition hawks. Listen, God, they had really four cows visit. growing up in Pali Hill. Four cows who weren't relatives. Real this. cows. And horses too. Bovine stock. And horses? they had horses in Juhu. Horses in Juhu. Those roamed horses free. were yours. I have ridden on those horses. <laughs> Not all of them. Not no. all of this one. <laughs> Some of these horses didn't eat much, so be careful. Oh, yeah. they they barely. How could. sad! But How now, small then? What a lovely city! Animals everywhere. Now look at this. Now we have two-legged animals. Who wants them? Oh, yuck! Next question. Next question. What is your opinion on France banning the burkini? On France, we don't say France. Sorry. Okay. Why no, I know. I them? know where you're from, but this France, he's, France, he's, he's I don't want to hell is France. Banning the Burkini. Listen, the only person who actually, uh, the only person <laughs> there, you go. The only person who speaks <laughs> French and has lived there is she, the lady in front of us, Aditi. Let her take that. For a minute, I was wondering. No, I'm not in the middle. May you're destroying both of us. We can't understand the question. I couldn't understand the country. She couldn't understand the concept because the pronunciation is wrong. In the Middle East, they say burka. Yeah, so burkini is what I say. This is like asking. No, is it burkini? This is like asking a Parsi for directions from Dadar to Tadio. You can't do this. Something she shouldn't say. Now, once again, ask us the question. Actually, you know, I'm just going to show it to you. With the right country. Clearly, I can't pronounce things well. It is France, yeah, France. Okay, let you take this. Come on, now you've lived in Europe and you're more Western Europe sort of citizen in that sense. So, what a world. We're living in and now yeah. you know, no. but in a sense, is it secular to ban everything which is the French way? No, the I, I don't think that's correct. But they have banned the cross and everything else as well. It's not like they've attacked one religion. So yeah. what about that from that perspective? So I was seeing this really interesting video yesterday on like uh, DNA, and that everybody like you know thinks that they're Different. probably. Hundred percent, hundred percent British, but actually they have thirty percent. The mixed of, genes. Yeah, the mixed yeah, genes, exactly. and it all goes back to a more secular country. You know. So where are but we? But you have a global from? perspective because I think we <laughs> Indians who live abroad and come back have that sort of sense yeah. of globality, if that's the right word. But a lot of people you're in the West. You're making up words. I may mispronounce them, but you're making them up. <laughs> that's now. what I do. <laughs> globality. Yeah, you know what I did to the word. <laughs> I sometimes okay. No, but 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 uh, is there a sort of in Western Europe? Are, are we under this uh, fear that there's going to be a huge right wing backlash and hence all this kind of thought process? Yeah. You've lived there, and worked there. Did you ever feel all that at no, that point? Not no, not at all. I haven't felt any racism at all. No. And when you're in the workplace, that's when you'll experience yeah. it or not. Yeah, you really so, do. But but it is a little. I worrying. didn't. I was in the UK, and I didn't. I didn't experience any like racism. But you didn't go to France. I didn't go to France. <laughs> you got to check France out. France <laughs> where all the problems are starting. Okay. It's a bit. It's a bit sad, but there could be a bit of a backlash. And like you said, the truth of the matter is, we're all mixed up much more than people know. Exactly. In America, for example, there was a study that said that Native American blood is present and Black American blood is present in about eighty percent of the white stock. So you know, there's no point pointing fingers. Everybody's That's bit true. of the same. I'm a pure breed Malayali. I, from I'm a I pure. I have Malayalam uh, blood. Malayalam in me. blood. Uh, Malayali blood in me, and I Excellent. speak Malayalam, <laughs> but only at three in the morning and under <laughs> the influence of alcohol. You think you're pure breed? I you think know, I'm a pure breed. But if you did a DNA test, you probably you'll find you're ten percent Parsi. I'm, I'm partly sure. Hence, you wear these uh, outfits <laughs> from time to time. Hey, my outfits are lovely. Which I have tassels well today. There you go. I don't know what to do with. That's the sign of a successful Parsi. Well done. Well done. Tassels. Yeah. I love tassels. What cartilages? I can't. Just tarsals. Tarsals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. How often do you feel men should shower? I'm against the concept. You spoke about France, and apparently they don't like the bathing concept either. <laughs> I, I think bathing is overrated. I don't know why we do it. I think we should do it like once in a week or once in two weeks. And a communal shower for me is more. It'll bring people together. But I don't want to shower with men because Indian men are ugly, and I can't bear to look at them naked. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Including yourself. Well, you have to live with yourself, so you can't exactly. say no. I can't get up and say, "Go away, body." People, that's it. Just have no mirrors mm, everywhere right. you go. So I'm all for communal showers, like Mohenjo Daro had. 
not the movie if he added that to the movie the movie would be in 7 hours so no no showers but <laughs> or you'd rather go to like have a hammam or something where someone's scrubbing you exactly. no i don't like that either because i'm very ticklish so that's a real Are pain you? because the other person gets very upset and offended Are you yeah. ticklish i can't get massaged no. You touch You're me, not? I laugh. I'm mad ticklish. I cannot get. Uh, I go to security check and they get uh, offended because if you touch me with the finger, I start giggling. <laughs> yeah, and I, I giggle in a very gay way, by the way. Uh, True. Uh, no disrespect. I go like. <laughs> I go like that. I giggle like very so high cute. notes. Yeah, I know. Fire. So every time the BSF guy is like touching your hip, and they actually touch the men's. Uh, they so like. Cyrus, have you showered today, by the way? I had to, <laughs> just for you. Aditi, thank you so much for being on the show. We're talking thank rubbish so and wasting much. your time now. So please have a good one. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Okay, catch us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Beyond Pod, any of the podcasting apps. Please, we beg you, we need you. If you have any questions, write to us online, and uh, you can mail us as well. We will answer. We have a doctor in the house called May. And that's what Cyrus says. After India Australia after South Africa England after Sri Lanka Bangladesh coming soon the empowering series the series to end all series that's right Zarina Punawala talks to Amit Doshi about how to become a great boss as in Amit has to become a better boss she's already a great boss check out new episodes on our IVM podcast apps happy listening mother f- and fathers Good evening ladies and gentlemen this is your captain speaking sorry to say but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun as you can see there's death destruction and chaos taking place all around us but don't you worry food and drinks will be served shortly and i would recommend checking out IVM podcasts to get some of your favorite indian podcasts we'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over thank you